All right, so uh, I'm going to, to talk about changes in the thermal subsystem that I would like to make. Uh, some patches have been sent already, so that I, I, I'm going to say uh, a few words about you know what's there in, the, in those patches and, and why I, I want to make those changes. So, um, but first, uh, a bit of term terminology for, for the people who may not be uh, super familiar with the design of the thermal subsystem. So as I said before, the session is going to be d d divided into in two parts. So the first part will be mostly thermal control. Uh, and uh, and there, then there will be a break, and after the break, we'll switch over to power management. Yeah, so so this is the the, the idea. So first, the thermal control terminology that I'm going to use, and then Daniel is going to use. <laughs> so this is like for the benefit of, of the first part. Uh, so we have thermal zones, which are basically uh, a thermal zone represents a thermal sensor, and a, yeah. So if you are sitting in a in at the end of the room and you can't hear me now, please move forward because we have audio problems. Those problems, um, may or may not be fixed at one point, but. Beautiful to watch this budget, they make so much noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I can't remove mine actually. That's a good idea. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we we have thermal zones, which represent thermal sensors, along with uh, with uh, some control and and monitoring mechanisms, like uh, like trip points, like cooling devices, and thermal governors. And uh, so so a thermal zone is a co is a temperature sensor equivalent with a collection of of uh, things associated with it. One, two, three. One, two, three. Again. Hello, 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 hello. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and so. this one? <clears throat> is this working now? Okay. Yeah, good. Oh yeah, now it's, now it's working, yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, so let me continue. Uh, hopefully that's going to, that, 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 that's going to be uh, the end of the technical issues for today. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, so, so the catch box is here. If you want to ask a question, please uh, raise your hand, and then and, uh, and somebody will throw this thing at you. Uh, uh, then, if the remote attendees have questions, please uh, please uh, turn on your camera if you if you uh, are able to do this, uh, so we can see that you want to talk. Um, all right, so let me continue. Uh, the zone temperature is 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 uh, is uh, uh, value returned by the uh, thermal uh, by by the temperature sensor in the thermal zone. Um, thermal mitigation. So this is a term that we use for uh, to to say that something happens in order to decrease the zone temperature, right? 
Um, so there is there are some actions uh, carried out. Uh, now uh, there are three points. Three points are so a three point is represents two temperature values. Basically, one you, you can think of, of them as temperature uh, temperature watermarks. So if you if the zone temperature crosses uh, one of them going up, then something happens. So uh, thermal litigations is, uh, are triggered. Uh, if it uh, crosses the other one going down, uh, that thermal mitigations are stopped. Uh, so they, um, uh, they they are referred to as, temp as trip temperature and trip low temperature uh, for your reference, and uh, trip hysteresis is just the difference between the two. All right, so there are cooling devices. Uh, and cooling devices, so a cooling device in, in, in our like language is something that can, uh, that can uh, pull the uh, zone temperature down. Basically, it doesn't have to, so, you know, the, yeah, uh, just as much. And then this, is, this can be anything. This can be a fan, this can be a, uh, a, 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 some code that, that will uh, throttle some devices and something like that, right? Uh, cooling states are, are the levels of activity of, of a cooling device. So uh, state zero, zero means no cooling, state one and so on means that the level is high, uh, up and up. Uh, all right, and then, uh, There are thermal instances. So th thermal insta a, th a thermal instance is a connection between a cooling device and a trip point. So the idea is that when uh, a trip point is crossed, uh, some cooling devices will be activated or their, their cooling states will be uh, uh, bumped up. And so you know, the, the, there needs to be a way to associate cooling devices with trip points. And this is done through thermal instances. So the thermal instance is, a, is just a link between a trip point and a Cooling device, and there are there are thermal governors which represent uh, thermal mitigation algorithms uh, associated with thermal zones. So the idea again is that a thermal zone uh, that th there should be a thermal governor associated with a thermal zone that will that will uh, manage the cooling devices uh, and so on. But th th there are cases in which. There, there are tripless thermal zones, so the, you can register a thermal zone without trip points and without anything else. So it's just a sensor that, you, that can be read uh, through SysFS, and there are, uh, and this is the simplest case, and all of the other cases uh, are possible going up. Like you can have trip points, you can have cooling devices, there may be trip points without cooling devices, and so on and so on. Without, there can be zones without governors. Uh, in the most Complicated case, a thermal zone is a thermal sensor with a set of trip points with uh, each of them is associated with a set of cooling devices and there is a thermal governor that manages all of that. All right. So, okay. Um, now, um, I, I will talk about the changes that I would like to make like one by one. Uh, and the slides are done in, in a way that, uh, so if you download the presentation, the links are active, so you can just click on them and see the patches, actually, uh, if there are patches. But for, for the most of the, of the points on my list, there are patches. Um, all right, so first of all, uh, today, um, so I, I should I should probably say that the thermal uh, thermal core subsystem has been undergoing some reconstruction for some time, uh, and uh, mostly to to improve the handling of, of trip hysteresis, but also other things, simplify code and so on. So, and, and this is the continuation of this. Uh, so at the moment the. Thermal instances are, are hooked all hooked up to a, at least in a thermal zone object. So all of the thermal instances for all of the trip points in a thermal zone uh, hang uh, off a thermal zone. So for example, if you know a trip point and want to find a, and a cooling device and want to find a thermal instance for the tool, and, and you may want to do that because the thermal instance contains information like what cooling state of the device to use for this trip point, uh, 
uh, then you have to walk all of the all of the thermal instances for all of the three points. That's like not very nice. <laughs> I just say. So the idea is to move uh, to move the, the the list of thermal instances or put the list of thermal instances under three point descriptor. So that you, if you know the three point, you can just walk the list under it, and then you know. That. So that's the first change. I don't think it's controversial. No. <laughs> OK, cool. Uh, I need to wait for, for a while to, for, for the slide to show up here. Uh, so the next, the next change is, uh, is an optimization of sorts. So today, is, uh, the design is that uh, when you register a thermal zone, uh, the three points are, are uh, already known. Uh, there is a known set of three points that may be uh, disabled to start with. But, but there is the number of three points, you know, and the types of them, and so all of that is known up front. So the, the terminal core creates a table uh, of three point descriptors, and, they, uh, and it may not be sorted because there is no guarantees that. The, the creator of the thermal zone will sort the three points to start with. And also the order, the trip temperature order may be different from low trip temperature order uh, in some cases. So, uh, so the, okay, so, so we have this table. And then when, the, when there is an update, uh, when the uh, thermal core reads the, the thermal sensor and gets the temperature, the zone temperature, uh, it needs to walk all of the three points in order to see if they are they have been crossed or not, or you know. So that's a bit the, of an overhead. It is not huge because usually the, the, there is not so many three points for for a thermal zone. It's like you know, in the, of of the order of ten, usually, right? So that that's not a huge deal, but then. Uh, from the um, just unnecessary overhead from, from, from the pure like uh, um, programming perspective. So it's better to, to re rearrange it so we have we, there is no fewer operations to to, uh, to carry out, and the idea is to use a sorted list for that. And uh, it is actually easy because we already use sorted lists in the thermal, thermal core for, for thermal modifications, so that can be used for uh, to uh, to uh, uh, to organize uh, trip points such that they uh, they, uh, they they always uh, the, every trip point is always present in a sorted list, but uh, it, you know it depends on whether or not it is uh, above or below. The, the the zone temperature, because if if it is uh, above as, uh, the zone temperature, uh, the, the or ordering ha has to be um, uh, by the by the trip temperature, so that the the higher watermark, right? But if the trip is below the zone temperature, it has to be ordered by the uh, the low temperature of the trip, which is the low watermark. So there are two lists, uh, and the uh, trips go between them as, as they are crossed. So basically, the, the, this is the idea. Uh, I don't think it's a su super controversial either. Yeah. When you talk about three lists, there is a interval tree API. There is an interval tree API. I have considered using it. But for this particular uh, uh, use case, it is not particularly useful uh, because um, uh, for for the notification purposes I, I, that I was talking about, we already have to um, move the trips around, sort of, and then the op operations on that tree are more expensive than the list operations. So, so yeah, but yeah, please, if you have time, look at the patches. If you have an idea to improve this, please let me know. No problem. So. <laughs> But yeah, I I did consider using it. Um, all right, so that's this, uh, and then the next thing is related to locking. So I would like to use a guard for thermal zone locking. Uh, again, super non-controversial. Uh, but if you want to, uh, if you have the time and uh, 
and, and can review the patches, please do so because it's super easy to make a mistake when you do those changes. Uh, because you know the, you have to um, ba basically uh, in, in every case where the locking is used, you have to use the guard in, in the right way and without you know, having it to be locked as as it was. Uh, hopefully, I didn't. There is one catch in this, which is that in one case we have to drop the lock and reacquire it in the middle of uh, uh, of, uh, of an action. So this is for the for uh, system suspend. When a system is suspending, uh, there, there is a case in which the lock needs to be acquired and then dropped and acquired again, and then and uh, uh, and this is. Uh, this doesn't really play well with guards, <laughs> but so I for now it's like open coded sort of. But then uh, I have an idea that maybe it could be done with by creating a reverse guard, like that will be unlock and lock, and then use it in this case. So uh, I, I'm going to send a patch later. But I, this, uh, th this occurred to me just on Tuesday, I think. So uh, yeah, so so guard that that is a no brainer. Um, th there, there are problems with thermal zone initialization and, and exit that are related. So <laughs> they are not visible in, in practice, but the, it doesn't mean that they don't exist. So if you register a thermal zone, it, is, it shows up in SysFS before it's ready. And when it shows up in SysFS before it's ready, then user space can, can talk to it, basically, uh, from that point on. And it can enable the thermal zone before it's ready. Th that, that is not maybe very bad, but also it triggers things that are like sort of out of control. <laughs> so it's better to avoid that. Because you know, ordering of things it needs to be followed. It doesn't. It, it doesn't really. It's, so you know, if this was just the initialization of the kernel, I wouldn't worry that much. But there are thermal zones registered by drivers, by modular drivers. And if you have a modular driver that registers the thermal zone, and then user space starts and enables it prematurely, then things may get confused. So the, the, these are the changes to to. Uh, Prevent this from happening, basically. Again, I don't think this is controversial because you know these are bugs mostly. Um, okay, more guards. So there, there are other lock, locks uh, other than the thermal zone lock, and I would like to use guards for all of those. So have patches, and they are in the, in the list. So again, please, if you have the time, please look at those. Hopefully, they are uh, all. Uh, correct. Um, uh, th th there is one thing that, that is not done today, which is that when the uh, thermal zone goes away, so for, for example, a, a, there, there is a driver who, that registers the thermal zone and it, it is unloaded. So the thermal zone goes away. We unbind, uh, so the kernel un unbinds cooling devices from that thermal zone. So the thermal instances uh, associated with trip points are removed, basically. And at that point, uh, the, the cooling devices that were associated with trip points in that zone are left behind like without changing their state. I don't think this is OK, because the thermal zone may be uh, the only one actually influencing those thermal zones. And so if you can think that, yeah, for example, if the, the, if the cooling device is a throttling cooling device, it might be, after something like that, it might, be, it might continue to, trot, to throttle things when the term, thermal zone has gone away already. So maybe not. It's just a very small change. It's like a super tiny patch. Um, OK, there are things that I'm thinking about uh, but have no patches for. Uh, so the stepwise governor right now uh, works the way uh, that, so the idea is to, uh, to, increase the, to increase the level of cooling step by step for all cooling devices in, uh, in the thermal zone. But when the, uh, uh, but it, it only works one way. So it 
it increases step by step, but then when the, the zone temperature goes below the trip point, the, the, the low uh, temperature of a trip point, it actually uh, reduces the, the cooling state of all devices in one go to zero. So that can be done in, in principle. And the problem with it is that <laughs> there, there may be this dance like going up, 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 then, then uh, going down to zero, and then again rising up, 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 up again, again to zero. So uh, maybe that can be done step by step uh, going down, but you need to be careful about this. So, so there is always a mitigation in, in place, but maybe we can reduce uh, the cooling states, uh, the decrease the cooling states of cooling devices step by step earlier. Uh, so th th that is one thing, and the other is uh, yeah. So we, if we use the sorted lists in the in the core, then the governors can use them uh, as well, and, uh, and that can be maybe a bit cleaner. Um, uh, now, now the testing enhancement. So I started to uh, to construct the testing facility for the thermal core, which is uh, uh, it, it works of, uh, of debug FS. You, you can create mock thermal zones right now. Uh, I mean, in 6.12 RC1, uh, you can create mock thermal zones, control them through thermal, uh, through debug FS, set the temperature. Uh, obviously, all of this is fake, but you know, you, you can exercise the thermal core and see, you know, what happens. If you do that, if you do this, uh, you can disable enable t uh, trip points, do, do things like that, uh, create them in different orders, so you know, everything can be. I would like to extend this by adding uh, support for, for mock, mock cooling devices, so you can create a, 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 a mock cooling device, then bind it to a mock thermal zone and see how this works, exercise governors and things like that. Uh, also, I would like to add uh, set, set trips uh, uh, testing support to this. And another thing is that I, I would like to have a circular buffer of notification messages because uh, right now they go uh, over Netlink, so I have to write a, an application opening a socket, reading all that from the Netlink socket. I would prefer to have the messages available in a, in the circular buffer as well, so I can look at them like like from a human perspective right away, or uh, or, or 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 from a shell script, which is easier for uh, for testing automation. So, okay, so these are the plans. Uh, hopefully, nothing super controversial. Uh, there, there will be uh, obviously there will be patches going to the mailing list. So, any comments, questions? Yeah, there's a mic. Yep. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Um, the netlink uh, net link messages. Uh, it is expected that uh, as soon as uh, some trip point is uh, reached, uh, there is a netlink message broadcasted to user space. Is yeah, it? so the, there are messages sent to user space on every change in uh, uh, such that the trip point is crossed, all, uh, or the uh, trip temperature is crossed on the way up, or the trip low temperature is crossed on the way down, but also on other events. Mm -hmm. Like the cooling device is bound and so on. Uh, um, I ask because uh, uh, there are some systems uh, with which I'm working. Uh, they don't have cooling devices. They are just uh, passively cooling, and uh, they usually there is no real strategy what should be done with these devices. So the main strategy is just. Uh, if uh, the system or house or whatever is burning, literally, uh, then we just stay till the very end and lock every, uh, I don't know, 10 grad of degree increasing temperature and notify whatever we are able to notify for then forensic research later. Uh, so is it uh, somehow possible to like set uh, uh, list of trip points like every 10 grades 
uh, and notify. Uh, Daniel is going to be uh, to talk about this. So not yet, I would say not yet, but we are working on it. So Just uh, to avoid polling of. Uh... No, so the, the, you, you, the, the, the it is possible to poll. Yeah, so you can you can uh, you can register a polling terminal zone, but also it is possible to to do, do this interrupt driven if you have uh, supporting hardware for it. For interrupts, okay. But so this is the end of what I had. Uh, the rest of the slot is Daniel's, basically. So uh, Daniel, um, all right. So pick the one that you are going to to start with. Nice user space, right? I think it might be. It's on your task list. Okay, so the um, I think the the title of the presentation was uh, user space three points. Um, so somehow, given the discussion we had uh, recently in the mailing list, we decided to rename that to three results, which is makes more, they are more um, self-explicit for the, what they are supposed to do. So three points are this, a description of the hardware. So the, the, the firmware gives information about the different temperature that the thermal zone is. Um, supposed to do an action with, and but the, the the user space actually needs to get uh, work up by um, when the the, uh, the specific time is, only, is crossing a temperature limit, and he has no mechanism today to do that. So the choice he has, he can pull indefinitely the thermal zone temperature and do an action when the temperature is crossing. That means the user space is constantly waking up the system. While we might want to be just sleeping during a long amount of time, because on the mobile system, it's not we cannot accept that uh, kind of wake up. So um, what we find, so out of three kernels, um, the, what they do is um, they do they, they create fake three points in the device tree. So the firmware is giving um, three points. They are not bound to any cooling devices, and they activate enables in the kernel the option to writeable three points. So they change the temperature of the three points on the fly, and use that use that to get notification directly. So. Yeah, so um, what we have today, most of the sensors are interdriven. That means we can program the sensor to send an, an interrupt when we are crossing the, um, the, the temperature limit. It's, and it's exactly what we want. We want to be wake up, wake up by this. Uh, we want to provide to the user space this mechanism to be wake up when you, we cross the temperature limit. So in order to give something to user space to use the, this mechanism, this existing mechanism, only the kind of using today, we are providing this uh, user space uh, results. Um, so now what we have is um, a patch set. Uh, it's a V3 version where you can specify the temperature you want to be, uh, when you, uh, at which temperature you want to be wake up. And you can give also the direction that means um, if you specify that you want to be wake up at a temperature limit on the direction the way up, that means you will receive the, the, the event only when you cross the way up. But when you cross the temperature the way down, you're not wake up. And the, the benefit of doing that is actually you can create hysteresis with that. So you, you create a upper limit for the hysteresis with your, um, up direction 
and you can create an the low limit of the hysteresis with a down direction. Or if you're not interested <coughs> of doing the hysteresis, you can specify up and down direction, so you will be wake, uh, wake up when you cross the way up and down, which is uh, yeah, acceptable for <coughs> thermal zone when the temperature is very slow in terms of variation. Um, also, we don't want to give a lot of information about the, the, the three point, the thermal zone, the three result. We just consider that the temperature is the identifier of the three result. So if you want, if you want to delete the three result to just specify the temperature, and um, it's, it's not, you, there is not trip ID, like, like the trip, trip points, you don't have IDs. So the ID is the temperature and the direction. So we do, we do a mix of both. So you can remove a temperature and a direction. So if there is a threshold set with both directions, then you will remove just one direction. Um, I think, yeah, given the comments in the mailing list, that yeah, I think we reach a consensus about this. <coughs> Okay, uh, so the yeah, so the, this is mostly like details to 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 uh, to um, um, to to agree on like you know implementation details. Yeah, basically. So this is going going in sooner or later. Uh, hopefully in six thirteen. Uh, six thirteen, right? So these results are just giving an, um, uh, a notification. So the notification are netlink based. So we, we have the Amazon ID, we have the temperature, and we have the current temperature, and we have the previous temperature. So with that, we consider that user space has enough information to to, to build the, the, the situation, the thermal situation, and we don't have to send 1,000 notifications when we cross all the results. If we specify a lot of results, just one notification is enough. And user space can figure out what is the delta, given this information, and do the, the appropriate actions. Uh, so the, I, I wanted to add to this that the, this, is, this, is, uh, this is intended for uh, thermal zones that support in, interrupt uh, <coughs> that the support thermal interrupts, but it can also be used with with fault thermal zones, yes. right? So, yeah. Are using the polling mechanism only, that means you will have a delay, which is basically half of the period of the sampling um, sampling period of the thermal zone. But now I don't think we have lot of sensor not working with the interrupt, so, yeah. Okay. So this is an example, you can specify from user space. So you have a set of Netlink comments and you have events uh, messages in Netlink. So with the comment, uh, the comment you can add a result, you can delete a result and you can flush all the results for the specific time and zone. So assuming that you have here, that's an example, you have uh, the temperature uh, result with a direction, U and D means uh, up and down. So um, here, this result, we have um, 37,400 uh, direction, so you, are, you want to be notified when you cross the way up and down. And if we have the temperature crossing, um, so we have the, the the system internally is wake up because we cross one of these results, then the thermal framework will read the temperature. We will have the previous temperature, the current temperature, and we send a notification. So even if we cross uh, several um, results, we send one notification with the Amazon ID and T0, T1. So that's an example. Um, here, the same. If we cross um, the, this result with the direction down, then we don't want to send a notification when there is a, 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 a flag set for um, uh, 
crossing the, 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 the way down. So just the third one, one is the, 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 in the list here. The last one, I mean, is the one which will result in a notification to user space. If the temperature is dropping a lot, then we will send one notification. And even if we cross these two uh, results, we will flag with the down, um, the, the way down flag. So if we want to monitor a thermal zone, obviously there is a trade-off between what we can do in user space, what the kernel has to do, and what the firmware has to do. And that will depend on the speed of the temperature variation. The faster it is, the less you can handle that in user space. So uh, for CPUs, for example, where you are, can have of very fast CPUs, very fast transition, temperature transition, trying to handle that in user, in user space does not make sense. You cannot do that. Uh, it's, could be, it should be the firmware, and if the firmware is not able to do that for, um, because it's not implemented, then the, it's the, up to the kernel to do that, but not the user space. So you can monitor places in user space um, with this result, but you are not supposed to monitor temperature moving very quickly because you will have storm of events and you don't want that. If you want to have, a, you have always a delay when you go from the kernel to the user space. So, and especially with the temperature where you can have big variation, then you 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 will have a storm of event and you will always be um, trying to catch up an image of the situation, which is not really resulting of the real. Uh, situation. So it's just a bad solution to try to handle that in user space. So the real, the real context of usage here is to have a thermal engine in user space trying to monitor different places to get a thermal information about what's happening more or less and try to mitigate the, the, the overall temperature where one of the uh, critical, uh, critical sensor is a skin temperature sensor which is moving very slowly, around one degree per second, and from there, the, um, the, the, the system has to take action to mitigate this sensor given all the temperature all around uh, the place. So what could be missing? So assuming that we have this um, result mechanism upstream, what could be missing? So What's in, we have processes setting result, and if we have other processes reading the, um, the events, it will receive notification about these results. Maybe we are not, we don't want to pollute, po pollute the, um, the, the, the other processes what, uh, watching the Netlinks events, um, which are thermal related. And so maybe what we can do is do per process notification. That means all the processes setting this result will receive the event, the event, and only the processing, the process setting the um, the result can remove or change a result. So yeah, that's a part I think of the next um, next step for for this results. Uh, Questions? So, so if, you, if you can uh, go back uh, a couple of slides to, to the to one, oh, oh yeah, the, that one, for example. So um, to answer your question about what to do with this. So you can just set a uh, set of those levels from user space and, and have like here and then when, when one of them is crossed, you'll get a notification via Netlink. And then you decide what to do in user space, basically. So that it is that simple. Yeah, right. And, and then you can, you can manipulate those things on the fly, so uh, you can remove them, add them as needed. OK, thank you.
Thank you.